In today's video, we're going to be setting up the integration to Google Play's in-app reviews in Unity. As always, we'll be working on my app, which has already been published on the Play Store. And if you want to see this code working on a real app, I'll leave a link in the description where you can download Multiply and check it out. Okay, first we're going to head into the Unity Package Manager by hitting the Window menu and selecting Package Manager. Give that a few seconds to load all of the packages and once it has there are two packages that we're going to be installing today. The first is the Google Play Core Package and the latest version in Unity is version 1.3. If you've already reviewed the Google documentation you might have picked up on the error that says you need to have version 1.8 installed. But rest assured 1.3 is the current version at the time of making this video and will work just fine for what we're trying to do here today. You can also download this directly off the Google GitHub, but wherever possible, I like to stick to packages provided via the package manager. The next package we're gonna to want to install is the Google Play in-app review package, also at version 1.3. These may take a couple of minutes to load on your system, so let it do its thing before we move on to the next step. Once that's done, we're gonna head into our project's hierarchy and right click to create a new empty game object. And this game object is going to be our in-app review manager. So I'm gonna call mine IAR manager and you can call yours whatever you want. Next, I'm going to add a new script component to this game object and this I'll name R manager. And again, you can call yours whatever you'd like. Then I'm going to drag my new game object into my prefabs folder to create a new prefab. So if I want to, I can deploy this in other parts of my app. Go ahead and open up the script in Visual Studio and let's get ready to work with some code. The first omission from the documentation that we're going to need to add in order to access the in-app review API is to start by using the google.play.review library. Now let's take a look at the actual Google documentation and for easy reference, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The first thing we're gonna do is follow the documentation by creating a private review manager field called underscore review manager. And to keep things simple, I'm going to follow all of the naming conventions provided in the Google docs exactly. The second thing we need to decide is how we're going to execute the code. And again, it isn't specifically referenced in the documentation. So I set up a new coroutine called request reviews to handle all the remaining code. Now we instantiate our review manager per the documentation inside our new coroutine. Then I'm gonna head back into the documentation and find the code that's going to request the review object. I'm gonna copy this code exactly as it is here and pop it into my coroutine. As always, I like to try and document my code so that it's easier to understand and customize when I come back to it in the future. Okay. Now that we've pasted that code, we can see a red squiggly line under the play review info bit. And that's because we haven't declared what that is. Another minor omission from the documentation, but easy enough for us to address. We're just going to declare a private review info field and name it per the code as underscore play review info. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. And we see that the red squiggle has gone. On to the next step. After we've requested our review info object, we're going to launch the actual in-app review request. So again, I'm going to copy the code exactly as it is in the documentation and head back into my coroutine to paste it. Once again, I encourage you to document your code and then uh, I'll just go ahead and paste the code. And that's it, or is it? Make sure that you don't forget to actually start your coroutine to execute the code. Up in the start method, I'm going to simply start the request reviews coroutine for now so that we can check if it works. Okay, we should be ready to take this for a spin now and see if it works. So I'm gonna build this latest version of my app directly to my phone and I've shared my phone screen so that we can see how it responds. 
Alright, on opening up the app, we can see that it's launched the review request immediately, which is great, and that's the kind of behavior that we'd hope to see. You'll notice that it's saying that this is a private review, and that's because I'm on the internal test track that I set up for my app. So for everyone else, it will capture a public review. Now that we know that the code is actually working, which is great, we need to think of the conditions we're going to use to launch the in-app review. Because just asking people for a review immediately when they open our app or game is going to be really annoying and bound to get us loads of one-star reviews. So what we want to be doing is requesting reviews from people that are most likely to give us the maximum five-star review or decent productive feedback. And to do that, we want to target people that have been using our game for some time already and hopefully we want to be getting people that are also enjoying our app or game to give us their feedback. So for my app, I'm going to be making use of player preferences to store the number of times my players hit the main screen. And I know that if they use every feature in my app, they'll hit the screen about five times or so. So that's the first time I'm going to request a review. And if they don't review it at that point, I'll request again at 10 times and then never again. But back to what we're doing here. Um, to set up my player preference, what I'm going to do is create a new integer variable called launch count. And in my start method, I'm going to initialize launch count to equal the player preference value that I've called times launched. And if you're going to follow a similar method to what I'm doing, um, you could call that player preference whatever you want. So where times launch doesn't have a value, we're going to set the value for launch count to equal zero. Then I'm going to increment that value by one by saying launch count equals launch count plus one. So basically every time the player hits the main screen or launches the app, the script is going to increment this value by one. Once I've done that, I'm going to set the new value for times launch to equal the new value for launch count. And I always like to be able to see that my code works. So I'm also going to add a debug.log to this so that I can tell in the Unity console that it's working. Finally, I need to add the conditions for which I'm going to launch my request reviews coroutine. So I'm going to create a new if statement that says that if the launch count is equal to either 5 or 10, then we want to start the request reviews coroutine. Again, I'll add a debug.log to this piece of code so that I can confirm that it works correctly if I need to debug it for whatever reason. You guys don't have to follow this example, of course. If you wanted to, you could keep the code exactly as it was before we added our conditional execution steps and just drop the prefab at the most appropriate points in your game. So for example, you could run this code after a player completes level five or level 10 or whatever. So let's check out this code in Unity. And after hitting the play button, I can see in the console that I've already run the code 16 times already. So I know this code is gonna work as I intended to. Again, guys, if you want to check it out in real life you can download the app from the link in the description and give it a spin and that's where we'll leave things for today's video guys i hope this video came in handy and if you're one of the few people that's still here at the very end please remember to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here my goal is to try and get to 100 subscribers before the end of 2020 which i think is a pretty tall order until next time stay safe and happy coding